Hello, the internet. Welcome to another episode of Don't Get Your Hopes Up, the podcast that's all about how your hopes are stupid, <laughs> and we hate them. I'm Josh Allen, a.k.a. Lore. Joining me, as always, is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Hello. Uh, hey. Hello. Uh, uh, is your name Inigo Montoya all of a sudden? <laughs> Hello. Hello. My, My name, name is Inigo Montoya. <laughs> hey, wow, I'm not even going to try it now. Go ahead. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> you killed my father. Prepare to die. Oh, man. Sexy. Yeah. Ugh. Speaking of preparing to die, <laughs> uh, right before this, uh, this podcast, I was watching your stream. And yeah. uh, it, was, it was kind of interesting. You were I didn't even notice at first that, <laughs> I don't know why, uh, that you were playing. Uh, oh. I thought you were just straight casting. Oh yeah, yeah, I was and dead. I, and, 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 <laughs> yeah, and I was, I was, I was like, oh shit, is like spectator mode? This doesn't look quite as interesting as I thought it'd be. What the what? What's going on? I don't understand. I'm so confused right now. Yeah, I was like no, watching. And, yeah, so you were dead. There is a spectator mode now. If you haven't seen it, which looks amazing. There's an add-on called Arena Live that a guy named Vadrek has made, mm -hmm. which is just absolutely brilliant. Like it's so good. Oh man. Um, so you, you'll have to check out. There's actually a, a GCD TV tournament. There's a there's a freaking WoW PvP tournament every single weekend right now. How crazy is that? Oh wow! How, if you build it, they will come. How crazy is that? Yeah, exactly. Remember how we used to talk about <laughs> yes! on Legendary how as soon as there was <gasps> anything resembling a spectator mode in WoW, there would be PvP tournaments like all the time. Yes. It's crazy so how th exactly that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah. man. I'm actually uh casting it this weekend. Well, on Saturday. I'm not gonna be able to do it on Friday. Oh, um, do I'm a plug. Be, I'm gonna be casting GC twitch.tv slash GCD TV. Check it out. Uh it starts at six PM Pacific, nine PM Eastern on Friday and Saturday. You should check it out. The teams are actually kind of amazing. Uh I was looking through the, the listing of teams earlier. Um, and Sidu and Chanimals and Smexen are playing again, which is awesome. Uh, Dilly Poo is playing with Peekaboo, which should be amazing, and Cubsy also. Uh, Nesper is still, Nesper's team is still there. Jamili's team is still there. Like, for people who have been following GCD TV, all of these names are amazing. Even if you haven't been following GCD TV, like, you should know who Sidu is. Uh -huh. Like, he's, he's a big deal. It's kind of, kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, he's playing, uh, uh, WLS, which is awesome. There's like two Walking Deads also, which is one of my favorite new Arena Comp names. Wait, it's actually called the Walking Dead? It's called Walking Dead. Yeah, so Arena Comp names have gone from being acronyms of the three classes, so like RMD, yeah. like WLS, stuff like that. That was what oh, they were like at first. Oh, like your George R. R. Martin Cleave. Yeah, exactly. That was very like, creative. I like that. They've gone, they've gone from being acronyms into for a little while they were like oh we'll just name it something funny so like kfc stands for kung fu cleave but it's still like <laughs> yeah, an yeah, acronym yeah uh, this was kfc there's tsg which is uh like healer warrior death knight um and that's or it's usually holy pally warrior death knight but like if you have a resto druid then it becomes tree sg which is amazing <laughs> um or if you have a mistweaver monk it becomes chi sg um, which it leads me into what arena comp names are nowadays, which is mostly puns. <laughs> <laughs> so, Walking Dead Cleave, or just Walking Dead. Sometimes people call it Walking Dead. Some people kind of, I call it Walking Dead Cleave because it's basically the definition of a cleave comp because you hit all three people at once. It is Healer, obviously. Mm -hmm. Windwalker, so walking. And Death Knight. <laughs> oh so my dead. god. It's <laughs> so almost like dead they, they tried to create that cop and then forced it to work just for the name. <laughs> like the name came first. It's so good though. Like it's doing really well this season. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's really, really awesome. Another, another personal favorite of mine that's really just showed up this season is uh, Healer, again, obviously. For whatever the healers like, the healers are so interchangeable nowadays that they don't really get to be part of the comps anymore. 
uh, like unless it's like a WMD or an RMD or something, mm-hmm. then obviously the the druid is the healer because the rogue and the mage are probably not very good at healing. Um, but so healer, hunter, retribution paladin. This comp is called Cupid Cleef. <sighs> <laughs> because there's wings and there's arrows. <laughs> oh man, that's good though. I mean, this is so it's much so good. better than RMP. It's so good, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's so good. There's a there's a few of them that aren't really around anymore. So like, um, uh, rogue and balance druid. Uh huh. When 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 rogues were still playing subtlety, which has shadow dance, um, and obviously druids have starfall. It was called Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> it's so okay, good. Geez. I mean, it doesn't yeah. help that each each you know each class has like ten to twenty different associated names, like sub names, like skills or yeah. talents or something. You know, it's yeah. like they could just make whatever they want. You know, just make yeah. something work. I got I got one more oh. that I think you'll appreciate before we go into the actual topic. Oh sure, sure, I'm down. That we have set up. Uh, this one, it, it doesn't work as well nowadays, but it was Resto Shaman, Rogue, Death Knight. Okay. And the reason it was called that, this is back in like, I want to say season eight, season nine, but my numbers might be off. Um, the reason it was called that, the reason it was called this name is because they had a ton of interrupts. It was called Kanye Cleave. <laughs> because like you had the rogue who has like a million stuns and obviously kick and like garrote and all these different things and like the death knight has bind freeze and strangulate um and then the shaman had wind shear which was on like a six second cooldown at the time so it was like hold up i'm gonna let you finish (laughs) uh that's wow yeah yeah this like so i do a lot of arena commentary Uh and really my ulterior motive with all of this is to push stupid team names that are hilarious to me (laughs) just like say them all just very unironically and just yeah so it becomes becomes a mainstay i like yell at my coach like i'll cast with super tease and i will yell at him if he calls something by the wrong name so like (laughs) um so LSD is a fairly common comp, which is Lock Shaman Druid. Well, at least it used to be. Um, it was more common in Mist than it is now. Uh, so he'd like say, "Well, it's an LSD, but with a Mistweaver healing." But it's still we're still calling it an LSD because uh, it's it's the same general idea. It's just a, a monk instead of a druid. And I'd be like, "No, no, no. <laughs> we call this LSG." <laughs> <laughs> this is the name of this. It's LS Chi. Or like, you know, I was talking about TSG earlier. There's two different ways you can do that. If it's a Mistweaver healer, it's Chi SG. And if it's a, or no, excuse me, if it's a Mistweaver healer, it's TS Chi. And if it's a Windwalker instead of either the Warrior or the Death Knight, then it's, well, it's technically now it's Walking Dead. But I was calling that one uh, TS Chi or Chi SG. One of the, I don't remember, but you, Chi something. Chi There's a Chi in there somewhere. something in there. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So anyway, speaking of stupid jokes, uh, April Fools happen. <laughs> what do you mean? Damn, stupid? that is those are pranks. That yeah, f- fucking I, th- I I do not like April Fools pranks. You are not alone, man. Like it's it, I I don't understand. It's just it. annoying. Like oh okay, so I, I know it's a I know it's April first. Okay, I'm not that out of touch. I know it's April 1st. Mm-hmm. I expect at this point I'm 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 approaching 32 years of age. I expect at this point that on April 1st there's going to be stupid shit all over the internet. Right. When you come out and go, "Oh, our game has been canceled." Or like, "We've decided that we're going to cast Orlando Bloom as Jaina Proudmore and stuff like that." Then I'm just going, "Okay, yeah, no." No, this, this A, it isn't entertaining because nobody's going to fall for this. And I certainly didn't fall for it. And B, all, all, you're, all you're doing now is just being a dick. <laughs> like, that's it. It's, it. it's not entertaining to me when people are just assholes for the sake of being assholes. 
So that's my that's my April Fool's rant. I you know you're you're oh, man you're not alone. It's it's so funny. It's like I I view April Fools as this kind of like it's 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 a one day a year that people get just to fuck off. You know they they just they just, yeah. get, just did they people that run sites to just do whatever they want. They could do something silly whatever. Uh, I will say that by about. 1 45 p.m i'm done with it i'm definitely done with it for me the day's over it's like come on let's, let's stick with like you know uh, can we get back to life please like, so the gmt <laughs> let's just do it by that okay it's over a day is over it's another day now let's just go to get over but you know what like in the morning it's like i i actually enjoy uh a lot of just the silly stuff that people do uh yeah. and you know some some of them are actually you know obviously kind of dumb but some of them, you know, they put a lot of work into it uh, to make it happen. And then, and then sometimes you're like, okay, this seems like really legit, but I don't know if this is legit, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, uh, like for example, um, Microsoft put out their whole, we, we put MS-DOS mobile, you know, we put MS-DOS on our mobile phones. Uh, and they were showing people using it and everything. And I was, I realized that was dumb. Is it possible? Probably. Sure. I mean, you could probably jailbreak it or, you know, obviously there's apps or something like that, but uh at the same time, I was also reading another article where these guys who write this third-party firmware for uh, for my camera and for like your know, various cameras, um, they actually got it to boot in Linux. Uh, they put a wrapper on it, and they're actually able to get it with very minimal dependencies uh, boot into Linux and MS DOS. And I'm like, okay, okay, somebody's somebody's <laughs> like something's wrong, right? Like this can't. Be- and it turned out that the camera one was actually real. These guys actually figured out how to do this. I don't know why you'd want to load up, I don't know, GIMP or Doom on your camera, <laughs> <laughs> but it's possible now. <laughs> but you, know what this, you know what this camera really, really, <laughs> really desperately needs is, God, I can't even remember the name of the, the stupid Linux programs I used to run. I used to, I actually used to use Linux as my primary operating system for like, Basically, until WoW came out, and I was like, "Nope, screw this. <laughs> I'm going back to Windows." Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, when, when am I gonna? When am I going to do that? It's like, am I gonna be like in the middle of a shoot or something, right? With like, with a model yeah. that, that I'm paying or something, like, and I'm like, hold on a second, hold on a second. I'm almost done with this number munchers match. Yeah, <laughs> let me just wrap this, wrap this up real quick. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be I'll be with you. Um, but no, there is like there there is a lot of. Uh, obviously Reddit had the button. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh, I did not actually. I heard about it, but I did not see it myself. So the button was, they, all they did was they were like, here's a button. And it was a subreddit that's called r slash the button. And, uh, you go to at the very top, there is a button and you, with an account that was, that was created earlier than, uh, the first, you can click on the button Mm. and there's a timer that goes down. And when you click on it, it resets the timer. Everybody sees the same button. They're all linked. Oh. It's a one minute timer. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of brilliant. When you click on it, uh, that's it. Like you, you only click that account gets and you get uh, a flare that says how many seconds into that one minute uh, you are. So for me, I have 59 seconds. So there were like oh. these clicks of people. So you're, you're that dick. I, 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 I'm the guy that clicked it right away, basically, because it goes like 160, mm. 59, right? Counts down. Oh, oh yeah. I, thought you, I thought you were saying that you mm. waited until 59. No. It had one second left. There and then was you like, it. there were these clicks that started forming of people who were like sub 59, so 58s and below, you know? And, <laughs> and then there were like these other clicks of like, oh, we don't need the button or whatever, because it, it'll say on your flare if you've clicked the button or not. And so there's like these mm. little clicks of just like, you know, we're the non button pushers. We don't need the button, blah, blah, blah. And it was, just, <laughs> and it was, it was, first off, you never saw a thing drop below 59 seconds unless you were lucky mm. or lagging. I don't know which. Um, but it was, it was kind of funny. And, and that's what I like about April Fools is that, you know, what? like once you're tired of a joke, you go somewhere else and you get another joke, you know? Yeah. Uh, did you see the Irritational? I have heard of the Irritational. Oh my god! I didn't actually get a chance to look at a whole because like I was working all day, so I didn't actually get a chance to look at a lot of the April Fool's jokes, other than the ones that Blizzard did. And even then, I didn't get to look at what most of the other franchises did. Yeah, yeah. The Irritational was probably because yeah, I know what I know what Ultra Rapid Fire mode is. Yes, yeah. So it it was basically an Earth an Earth mode. Uh, single single match elimination challenge, 
uh, with two teams, uh, Ye Old League Organization, uh, aka YOLO, and uh, <laughs> the Society of Worth Assessing Gentlemen. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and they had like, they just had a, a, a ton of, um, of players and their managers actually also playing. Uh, competing against each other. And, like, right in the middle of the match, they would just, like, stop the match and, like, hot swap and kick people off and, like, do these substitutes. And just, it was... And nice. the the, uh, the casters were all in character with their, like, very, like, you know, Victorian, just kind of, like, with their hats and their, their attitudes, <laughs> their snooty attitudes. And just, I don't know, man, it was nice. just... It was just, like, they packed every league and just even general related, like, meme into this one show... And it was super entertaining, even if like you were not like into into league at all. Like it was, uh, it was super. They did a really good job with it. Nice. Um, and there was a couple other things, a couple of other really you know like weird things. And uh, what was another good one? Like subtle things. Uh, I was looking at a subreddit. I don't even know which one it was, but it would uh, add a sentence or something at the end of what everybody was saying. So here, I have a, here, I have a list here. I took a screenshot. So this guy is saying, uh, commenting on this video uh, or this picture or something, and he's saying, uh, Sarah needs to shut the fuck up while Grandpa is talking. Ted Cruz is awfully attractive. <laughs> it's all, and then it comments all, that's how it's done, son. Honestly, these mods are the best. <laughs> <laughs> Such savagery. Pumpkin spice lattes are my favorite. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and it nice. took me a while. I was like, why are these guys saying this? Oh... Nice. Uh, but yeah. Then Twitch had the uh, 24-7 Darude Sandstorm channel. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. Like, YouTube was also doing a thing where, like, if you searched for certain types of music, like certain music <laughs> tracks, it would say, did you mean Darude Sandstorm? <laughs> <laughs> they, they had the little button, too. Where you could yeah. click on to add music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah. And like Google Google Maps had the like Pac-Man actual roads mm -hmm. thing, which was really funny. That was really good. Um I actually got to like sort of take the lead on the April Fool's patch notes this year uh -huh. for WoW, which was <laughs> a lot of fun. Like I, I really enjoyed doing them last year, like just helping out with them. And this year I was like like obviously it was a Excuse me, it was a full team effort. Everybody contributed different jokes and but stuff. But it was pretty much yours. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Obviously, like, all the, all the funny ones were mine. If you laughed at it, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, this, this, that sort of thing is why I love April Fool's Day so much. Because on how many days of the year can I say something like, uh, uh, like fixed an issue that caused some classes and specs to be completely broken in PvP and not get fired. <laughs> <laughs> How many days of the year can I do that? And the answer is exactly one. See? Um, so you do like April Fools. I love April Fools. I hate April Fools pranks. Okay. Like I like jokes. <laughs> I don't like pranks. That's sort of how I draw the line here. If the if your goal with it is to trick people into thinking it's real, and then be like, oh, you're so stupid, I can't believe you fell for that. Then that's, that's just kind of tiresome. But if your joke is to be silly and funny, then that I'm totally cool with. So, it, so, they shouldn't, so it's April Fool's, so we should just classify it more of a joke day. Yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send a letter. Yeah. Yeah. Alert the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let everyone know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just like... And even, like, the ones that are kind of, like, semi-believable, but still funny, and, like, a, like, as long as you're not being, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, harmful with it. Uh -huh. Like, as long as you're not trying to actually piss people off with your April Fool's joke, or, like, get people excited about something, and then, turns out it's April Fool's. Like, if, uh, <laughs> like, if Doctor Who came out and said, David Tennant's coming back as the Doctor. And I would, be, I would be like, oh my god, this is the most amazing news ever. I love David Tennant. I'll kiss him on the mouth. And then <laughs> I would find out later <laughs> that it was fake. I would just be sad. Yeah. Like, I would, there's no enjoyment to, to be gained from that. I will just cry to myself openly about 
how David Tennant is at the and doctor And that's anymore. when April Fool sucks. Yeah, exactly. You maliciously hurt my feelings. Malicious. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. That make that makes sense. That makes sense. I was I was a little butthurt over the whole Darude Sandstorm thing because uh, I watched because you really like that song. And I you watched didn't want it to be a joke. no. I, I was I was like he's like oh yeah big there's a big announcement and I watched for like the entire hour countdown he was doing this whole AMA type thing and answering all these questions live live on the stream and it was really cool like just to you know hear a producer kind of talk about uh, his experience and it's funny like he's totally not a techie like at all. He may use right. like you know like Logic and, and other DAWs, you know, uh, basically software recording stuff, but he's hmm. clearly tech Um He referred to it's as tech tarted. He referred to it as YouTube's and Twitter's. Can, can we explain? Can we just dwell for a moment on the fact that you just said tech tarted? Have you not heard that term before? No. Oh, uh, I'm thirty. I'm know, thirty-one. I don't know where I heard that actually. But it's just basically like maybe it was like an IT thing or something like that. Uh, it's just it's just somebody that who is. Uh, uh, I get I get what it yeah. means. Oh, okay, okay, it's fairly obvious. <laughs> Sorry, I, don't know I why. just <laughs> wanted to point out that you said it. <laughs> it just came out, all right. <laughs> uh, but but anyway, so yeah, I was like they're like oh yeah, twenty four seven Drew Sandstorm, and then they started playing, and I was like I was like wait I waited like three songs, and I was like. Right, I was like, oh, yeah, I think I, well, I felt like three songs. It's hard to tell because the song is just like thump, 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 thump the whole damn time. Do, 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 do. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to tell when it stops do, and ends, do, 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 do. or it stops when it starts. Um, but but anyways, yeah. So I was a do, little do, 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 do. butthurt about that. But uh, but then when when you know somebody tweeted that they that oh no he's it's not what it's gonna be. And I was like yes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My wife's like, uh, I was like, yeah, you know, the rude sandstorm. And she's like, I don't, really, I don't know the song. I was like, yeah, I'll play it. I played what? it. She's like, I don't know the song. And I'm like, how do you not what? know this? She's on Reddit just as much as I am. And I'm like, babe, how has anyone escaped that? The answer to everything is the rude sandstorm. It's always do 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 do. Yeah, yeah. What's what's the name of the track? Drew sand. Doesn't matter what song it is. Drew sandstorm. Yeah, yeah. I was really shocked by that. I was like, I thought I knew you. Yeah, but yeah. Anyways, that's it. <laughs> that's the one that's the one like EDM song that violates the cat rule, the the meow rule that I've explained before. I f- I about know how, like this. Yeah, it's about how the best the best songs, the best uh EDM songs, you could meow the the main uh the main Oh, hook. that's right. <laughs> yeah. But you can't really go meow 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 meow. I mean, I guess you kind of can actually. Now that I now that I <laughs> say that it out loud, it. it actually. <laughs> Go on. No. <laughs> so, speaking of. Uh, so, speaking of. Darude Sandstorm, do, by do, which do, I do. mean, speaking of do 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 do, by which I mean. Speaking of doing it in the butt, so Philip DeFranco. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this one, this I'm 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 still undecided on how I feel about this. I was it's very not, interested in your response. Go ahead. Yeah, it's not it's not something that is unique to Philip DeFranco by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. We see this all the time. So Philip DeFranco has decided that he wants to support the uh, LGBT community. Great. Um, obviously, that's totally fine. Like, yes, support away. They could use the support because stupid shit happens all the time. So, yes. Thumbs up to this. Supporting supporting the LGBT. I, I always feel like every, I always have to think about the order that I the see those letters, letters in. Going. Well, you're, you're missing like three letters, too, by the way. Yeah, it was like LGBTQ. QQIAAP. Uh, I can't keep track of Something it anymore. Like that, My yeah. brain always <laughs> wants to go GBLT because everything I ever say, I'm thinking about sandwiches. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, support the BLT community. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bacon is a vegetable too. Um. <laughs> But no, so so Philip DeFranco is wants to support the LGBTIAP 
A T community. community, yes. His acronyms are getting out of control. Uh, he wants to support those people, which is cool, awesome. Yep. He has decided that the way to support this is by starting uh, starting a GoFundMe, which already sort of raises a red flag for me, but uh, he's starting a GoFundMe for what he's calling Philip DeFranco's Big Gay Religion. Now, the message that he puts behind this, I'm totally cool with. Like, the, the idea behind it, like, he says stuff about, like, uh, he's talking about the discrimination of gay people. Uh, there's, like, that, that movement in Indiana recently, which was, like, uh, it's okay for businesses to declare that they are, like, this business's religion. You can't do things that are against this business's religion, um, which includes, like, serving gay people at restaurants and mm -hmm. stuff like that, which is just flat stupid. Um, like, that's just, you, you can't, you can't, you can't kick gay people out of your restaurant and say no gays allowed. And he makes the excellent point that if you change the word gay to black or Jewish in that sentence, that suddenly it becomes pretty obvious why this is a bad thing. Yes. Yep. Um, and he's like, he's saying all these good things in this, in this GoFundMe about how he doesn't agree with that. Um, but he also doesn't agree that like this specific pizza uh, chain that's now saying this doesn't think that they themselves are the problem, but that they're ignorant um, and that there's a, a deeper problem going on here. All, all cool. All like totally agree with this is all completely true. Mm -hmm. um, and then he goes, so I propose two things. Number one, you donate money that we can put together for fight f to fight for equal rights. Now, originally, that was all he said about what that money was doing. So that put all sorts of warning bells in my head because I've seen a billion and one GoFundMes <clears throat> that the person just ends up pocketing. Right. Uh, he later put an update that said, like, literally as I tweeted about how I was not super cool on this idea, he posted an update that uh, he'll be matching every dollar donated up to $10,000 with his own personal funds um, and that he was looking into and wanted input on which uh, nonprofit uh, that money should go to. So, okay, cool. I'm, I'm okay with the money side of things now that he's a little bit more upfront about what the money is doing and that he's putting his own money into it. Yeah. The one that I have an issue with, possibly, I'm still not sure if I actually have an issue with it or not, is that he's calling this... <laughs> he says, <laughs> let's start a religion <clears throat> called Philip DeFranco's Big Gay Religion. Now, and then you he don't calls have a problem with the big gay religion part, though. I have zero problem. I think it should be called the big gay religion. Like, big gay religion, awesome. Why does this have to be Philip DeFranco's big gay religion? Why, why, is it, why, why does is his it, name need to be it, there? Why is, it, why is it his? Yeah, why... <laughs> the, and he, he even goes on to say, like, the next sentence is, Some of you have called it Philintology. Which now removes the entire big gay part of it, and is like, let's make sure that we recognize that this is Philip DeFranco's thing. And I'm of two minds on this particular issue. One of them is I really, 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 really hate, and tons of people do this, and it drives me nuts, when people use a charity or use a cause to promote themselves. Like, if you don't actually care about the charity, you don't actually care about the cause, you're just saying, this seems like a good way to get people to know about me and put things... But, like, I know I, I can think of an example of... Uh, I'm not going to name it specifically, but I remember there was a uh, charity ages ago that both you and I were um, invited to be a part of this, like, live stream or something. And the guy, like, changed what the charity was, like, two or three times, and he changed, like, what the, even, the whole cause of the whole stream was, and it became pretty obvious that uh, the person who was running this was doing it just because he thought, I should do a charity stream because it will benefit me as a content creator. Yeah, I, I remember this, actually. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It did happen. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> just that's like the sort that. of thing that I, re I really have a problem with that when someone decides... But at the same time, I also, I'm throwing things now. At the same time, I also don't, because at the end of the day, it's still this cause getting support. Even if it's maybe kind of a shitty way for them to get support, it's still like, it would be dumb of me and very hypocritical of me to say, yes, I support the LGBT community. 
but not when they get help from Philip DeFranco. Like, what? <laughs> like, that would be a stupid thing to say. Like, sure, if, like, regardless of whether or not he's now branding this with his own name and turning it into a way to self-promote, which I think is a shitty thing for him to do, like, it's still better than if he wasn't doing it at all. Right. So that's why I'm kind of like, I don't, I don't actually know how I feel about this whole thing. I've got... I got some issues to sort out, man. I got, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit vulnerable, and <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, I don't think that Philip DeFranco can really benefit from this personally much. You know, not for the amount of money he's putting into it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, he's putting ten thousand dollars of his own money into it. Um, I'm going to assume he is. He says he is. Uh, yeah. And if I had ten thousand dollars to throw away on something, um, and I'm just saying, like literally, like if I had ten thousand dollars to put on something, and maybe doing a whole fundraiser that didn't come to mind, I could think of other ways to do promotion, uh, which would be just straight up, you know, buying promotion for yourself uh, with ten thousand uh, dollars. So I don't think that he. Uh, he himself is benefiting much from this. Uh, I think that putting his name in it, uh, he's either doing it smartly because he feels that his popularity is going to drive more traffic to it by putting his name on it and not just by promoting it. Or yeah. it could just be straight up, straight up blind vanity. Like he is attaching the name to it because he thinks it's funny. He doesn't think about, you know, like it's, it's just he's so used to promoting himself. Uh, I mean, you've done it. I've done it. You're so used yeah. to promoting yourself that you just, you just, you, you autopilot and you throw your name on things just because that's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And like someone on Twitter earlier, like I was talking about this very briefly on Twitter, uh, and someone made the excellent point that Philip DeFranco's, in fill in the blank here, like Philip DeFranco's uh, ducks will probably get a lot more attention than just ducks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, Philip DeFranco's big gay religion is going to get more attention than the big gay religion. For example, we're talking about it on this show. <laughs> like, <laughs> this... The, this... If he just called it big about, gay religion, he would not have... We, yeah, we if, he just called it. It, if he just called it the big gay religion, then, uh, like, I might have tweeted about it. I might have been like, yeah, this is a cool movement. But I would certainly not have been talking about it on this show, most likely, because it's kind of outside the scope of, at that point at least, kind of outside the scope of what we do here. Mm -hmm. um, I would not have been, I need to go on a rant about this <laughs> on this show, <laughs> at the very least. Like, it, if, we, if we had decided to talk about the big gay religion on this show, it would have been a, hey, there's this movement, go check it out, it seems like a good thing, end of story. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Now, instead, we've been talking about this for, like, 15 minutes. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I get that putting his name there... Like, I can see really good arguments in either direction for whether or not doing stuff like this is good or bad. Yeah. Like, it's really... Uh, on the one hand, I really, really hate when people take advantage of the misfortunes of others to self-promote. The ice bucket like, challenge comes to mind. Yeah, exactly. Like, there were so many people that did the Ice Bucket Challenge because they knew it would get them views, yep. and they knew that it, they would make money off of it. There were yeah. so many people that did that. But on the other hand, in the process of getting themselves views and getting themselves uh, ad revenue and so on, they helped promote awareness, even if, it was at a, even if the majority of the people that looked at the Ice Bucket Challenge or saw the Ice Bucket Challenge, like didn't realize that it was for ALS and it had no idea what ALS even stood for. Uh, sounds like an arena comp. Like what, <laughs> what even is this? Um, ALS something lock shaman. I don't know what the A stands for. Another um, lock shaman. Another the lock Tuesday. shaman. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Affliction lock shaman. Yeah. Um, it is a twos team, but like, even if the majority of the people that saw that had no idea what ALS was, it helped promote awareness of this disease, which is a big deal. Like, it's a disease that often does not get any sort of support, even from, like, governments and so on, 
because it's a disease that affects a relatively minor number of people yeah. and uh, not a lot of people know about it. So nobody makes a, nobody says anything about it. They, you, you don't get a bunch of letters as like a Senator or something. You don't get a whole bunch of letters from people who are concerned about ALS coverage or ALS support because nobody's ever heard of it. Uh, the, my entire knowledge of ALS stems from the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> so case in point right there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's true. And I, I, what's funny when I saw your initial tweets, I was like, I, I knew that this stemmed from like stuff that, you know, like, like what you described earlier with the, uh, uh, people just trying to, to, to ride some popular thing, uh, it just in order to promote themselves and that's it. Like yeah. that's just what they do. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, you and I have seen it firsthand. Uh, shit. I mean, we've even in some, some capacity, but actually participated in it. Uh, you know, Hey, it's probably oh, game sure. everyone's playing. Let's make a video about it. You know? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it definitely rubs you the wrong way when it's uh, it's, there's a benefit there and it's like, well now there's a double benefit here because now I'm going to get popular by promoting this thing. And yeah. it's just like, it's kind of shitty. Yeah. Like, Extra Life raises tons of money every year for, uh, I don't actually remember offhand the name of the charity. That, is it Child's Play that they, I don't remember actually who they give the, the money to off the top of my head every year. But I, I remember it being a charity that's um, well respected yep. and does a lot of good things. Um, which, side note, investigating charities is always a good idea. Like... Before you, before you go, I'm gonna go ahead and support this uh, this charity. I'm gonna I'm gonna donate to this stream because they're giving money to uh, water for kids or something like that. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to make up a charity yeah. that I don't think actually exists. Like you should you should investigate that charity first. Um, and people that are doing charity streams and stuff like that should be willing to evangelize this charity a little bit and explain why this is a good charity that because they've also done their research. Yeah. Um, but Extra Life every year raises a ton of money for a very reputable charity who's, I, I don't remember, I should actually Google this. Uh, I don't remember what the charity is. Um, every year they, they raise a ton of money for a charity <laughs> that is named... Reputable. Uh, it's for Miracle, Children's Miracle Network Hospitals is ah, okay. what they, they raise it for. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> So it's it's similar to Child's Play, but a little bit different. Every year they raise tons of money. Every every time it's not even yearly anymore. I think it's uh, just constantly like there 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 will be extra life marathons on Twitch, and tons of money gets raised for that. Tons of streamers come together and raise tons of money for it. A lot of those streamers are doing it because they think it will get them views and followers and subscribers, and that they will personally benefit from it. But at the same time, it's hard for me to say it's a bad thing because the end result is still a ton of money goes to children's miracle network hospitals who could totally use it. Yep. So I don't know. I think it's the sort of, I think it's the sort of like necessary evil side of things. It is. It, yeah, it is. It's, it's like, you're not doing this out of the goodness of your heart. And it's like, well, but somebody else is benefiting. It's like, it's totally yeah. the greater good thing. And that's, that's the hardest part. Sometimes when we look at some of these things, it's like, it's like, but you know what you're, it, when you look at it, you have to look at the greater good. Um, yeah, for you sure. don't have to associate yourself with some of these. Like for example, the you and I were supposed to do that thing, and then we we both bailed. Yeah. Um, and you know, for good reason. Like it didn't seem like it was uh, very. Yeah, it was super shady. Yeah, so it wasn't worth the the shot to go and do it. But um, especially <laughs> in cases where someone is changing the charity that they're donating to, the like at that point you run the risk that if they're. <laughs> if the money isn't going directly to them, if it's going through like this guy's like, I will accept the donations and then send the amount that I received over to this charity <laughs> and they keep changing the charity. You're very much running the risk that all you're doing is lining someone's pockets at this point. Probably. My cat is flipping the fuck out in the middle of this conversation, by the way. It's got something to say. Yeah. Chin hot cat. No, it's the other one. Ugh. Chin hot cat is super fat and lazy and yeah. does not does not do much of anything right now she's just sitting looking at the other cat going what is wrong with what, you what are you doing <laughs> being all active what is this <laughs> i'm gonna go take a nap now 
Uh, I interrupted you in the middle of saying something. No, 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 no. I, I think that just ultimately it's the the greater good. I don't think Phil DeBrinko is going to gain anything from this in terms of like the grand scheme of things. Uh, I think it's just, uh, and you know, if he is, that it's it's probably a minuscule a minuscule amount of uh, of benefit. Um, but he's already done twenty thousand dollars. He's got he broke ten thousand. Uh, and yeah. obviously we and just going to match that. Today. Yeah, he's matching up to ten thousand, so guaranteed at least twenty thousand um, dollars. Yeah. And you know the, the the thing that spawned it was the or the, sp- the spurred this whole thing was the uh, the pizza joint in Indiana uh, that you know they they hit the news and then um, they basically they shut down because obviously they got a lot of threats and everything from people who were uh, did, did not agree with them and. They and then somebody set up a GoFundMe or something for the pizza joint, and they raised over a hundred, like a hundred and twenty something thousand um, dollars wow. for the pizza joint. And <clears throat> those are people supporting, obviously that that line of uh, uh, of thought. And yeah. so that's that's I think where the flip side came, where Phil Franco was like, "Well, you know what? I'm gonna make a big gay religion, and we're gonna raise a bunch of money for it." And so that's yeah. kind of where this came from. And that's yeah. that's pretty powerful. Like this is a this is a Yo, this is Phil DeFranco. Yeah, he's popular on YouTube. Everybody who's listening to this probably knows who it is. Uh, if you don't, that actually kind of speaks farther to the point I'm about to make here. Uh, he's just a guy on YouTube making videos that's relatively popular. Uh, this is this uh, pizza joint, this tiny little Podunk Town pizza joint, is now pretty much known through uh, everybody in that community. Uh, and I don't mean just the community like local, like geographically. I mean people who have the same beliefs as this pizza joint. Uh, because you know it was on Fox News, it was on the various news stations that reach out to these people. Those people back them up, and they raised a hundred something thousand dollars. One fucking guy, Philip DeFranco, you know, relatively popular on the internet, made something and already already uh, got up at least you know uh, what twenty percent of that. That's yeah. pretty impressive. I think it's also important to point out something that actually Philip DeFranco says in his GoFundMe as well. Is that this pizza joint is not the problem; it's a symptom of a greater problem. Yeah, um, and it to me it is very very hypocritical to be like, no, what I do is what I'm allowed to do, and then threaten actual physical harm to people who are in doing what is in their mind the same thing. Like it's important to think from multiple perspectives here, and the reason that. Uh, people like this, the, the the people that run this pizza joint and so on are so anti-gay isn't because, isn't necessarily because they hate people and they want like gay people to have miserable lives or anything like that in their mind. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm prefacing this by saying that I fully support the LGBT uh, and whatever other letters go on there now, Q and various other letters. I can't keep track of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. We don't, past we past don't four letters, I lose track. Um, <laughs> the that that community. Uh, I fully support that community. I think it's important to recognize that the other people aren't necessarily evil. They're just misguided, right? Like they're just confused. They don't understand what they're doing. In, not in all cases, obviously, but in a lot of cases. I would, I would be surprised if of the $120,000 or whatever they raised, that was even mostly people who were just like, yeah, we hate the gays and we hate them and we want them all to die and have miserable lives and so on. That voice makes my throat hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, so when, one thing that Philip DeFranco points out in here is that he doesn't agree with the harassment that... Uh, uh, the pizza joint has gotten. And that's sort of what I've been circling around to this whole time, is just because they did something stupid it doesn't mean that they should be fearful for their lives and have to close down their business because, like, if they close down their business, it should be because, like, there was a law passed that says this is now illegal and you can't do this anymore. It shouldn't be because they're afraid they might die. Yeah. <laughs> like really guys come on yeah uh it's basically fun. i'm it, just it, saying it, don't it be goes, dicks it goes but yeah don't be dicks right it goes both ways like the mm-hmm. um there's definitely a cultural divide and when i was in the military like you you really get exposed to it because in the military you're basically thrown into a room with 30 other dudes who uh 
who are from all over the states. So, and, and beyond, you know, like we had a guy from Puerto Rico. We got a guy from, uh, uh, from Haiti. Uh, we had uh, some from Hawaiians. We had people from Kentucky. We had people from the South, a lot of people from the South, uh, including like Texas, which isn't really the South. Um, but it's like we have people from all over the place. And that's a lot of different upbringings, completely different upbringings, all thrown into the same room together. Uh, yeah. So you see people... Uh, you know, in this case, forcefully uh, needing to get over their own personal issues, uh, whether it be race or creed or whatever. Um, and you have to get over that very, very quickly. Um, and you see this happening with some people. You know, they kind of slowly come around. They're very cautious of other certain people, whatever. But it's um, and you, you, you learn this by the whole like they break you down and whatever, build you up type thing. But um, a lot of people don't, you know, they, they don't leave whatever town they're in. You know, and it's like, hey, if I grew up in San Francisco and I never left San Francisco, I would watch, you know, I, I would see people in, you know, like southern Indiana or Kentucky or Tennessee or whatever, uh, the Bible Belt, maybe. Um, and I would just be like, wow, man, like these people are idiots. Uh, and I, I don't know. I don't I mean, because I, I, there's such a cultural divide, I wouldn't understand how people like that could even be, be get on with their lives. Like, <laughs> right. I was like, how does this person, this person is so dumb. Like, how are they even getting on with their lives? You know, like whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, there's the culture divide there is what's like killing it on both sides. Uh, yeah. You have to be there to really under, I mean, you can understand it if you're just like on the internet, honestly, like you see it happen so much that you kind of understand that people are just like this and it's very difficult to break them of it because they're born and raised this way. Yeah. Um, but, but actually witnessing it and seeing how people interact with each other. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. And like, I think, I think I'm in a, uh, a relatively unique situation um, because of how I was raised and now that now where I am. Uh, and so like, cause so um, I'm in a relatively unique position to understand the line of thinking from either side of this cultural divide you're talking about just because like I was born and raised in Battle Creek, Michigan, which by the way has a TV show about it now, uh, which is actually fairly decent. So people should check that out. <laughs> but I was born and raised in Battle Creek, Michigan, which is a very conservative area. Um, I was raised by a super Christian family. Like, uh, and now I've, gotten older i've spent time on the internet i've spent time uh researching things i've become very close friends with people from other countries um i've had time to sort of compare the way that i think to the way that other people think and i've now moved to california where it's a much more like i'm surrounded by much more of a like left-wing sort of atmosphere out here uh which is great for me personally because it tends to align a lot with my personal beliefs mm -hmm. uh in terms of like politics and stuff like that but coming from an area where a ton of my friends and family back home are like super right wing and they're like uh like a lot of my friends are very anti obama they're very like pro um excuse me like anti gun laws and stuff like that and these are all things that um like i don't want to get super political here but like they're things that in california where i am now it's totally the opposite um in terms of the average person that you bump into. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's, it's just interesting. Like, I know that all of my friends back home are not stupid assholes, right? I know that they're not, uh, malicious. I know that they're not just angry and evil people. Mm -hmm. Uh, they just have different opinions than a lot of other people do. So I think it's just important to remember that in all cases on both sides of this particular cultural divide that we're discussing at the moment, it's still people. People make mistakes. People do dumb things. Uh, they shouldn't. N no one should ever be fearful for their life because of their religious or political leanings. There you go. Very well said. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Well, that was heavy. That was. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot heavier than I was expect. I was expecting to go on a rant about streamers using, <laughs> like, like content creators using. No, uh, you know, it's other people's shit. This, for, you know, it's funny. We, we, yeah. we had this on, we had a lot of stuff to talk about last week and, uh, we had this on the list to talk about last week 
and uh, because it was fresh, it was like you know the Indiana law passed, and like, yeah, um, Gen Con is not going there. Uh, Salesforce is pulling out, and they're actually moving people out. There's a oh, lot is of Gen people Con actually who, actually pulled out. What's that? Last I last I'd heard, Gen Con had threatened to pull out, but I hadn't heard that they'd actually done it. Oh, you know, I don't know, I don't know what the follow up is. Um, but Salesforce is actually not only pulling out, uh, but they're also moving their employees out. As if it's like wow. some kind of competition now to see who can be the biggest. Who can get the fuck out of Indiana the fastest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, who could take the most business away from Indiana. Um, and honestly, it, if you've ever been to Gary, Indiana, this isn't even an, uh, a political thing anymore or a religious thing. Gary, Indiana just sucks. <laughs> 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 I I have family all over Indiana actually. It's kind of funny. Like uh, my brother. Are any of there. them from Gary? Uh huh. Are any of them from Gary? None of them are from Gary. Uh, That's good. They're from other towns that nobody's heard of. <laughs> so I should probably explain why I hate Gary, Indiana, so much. Go for it. Aside from the fact that it has one of the worst crime rates in the United States. It's funny. I googled it and it said Gary, Indiana crime. So go yeah. on. <laughs> it's it's got one of the worst crime rates, especially for a non like major city. Like, you expect a place like Detroit or New York to have kind of a shitty crime rate because there's a billion and one people in those places. Detroit especially, because it's... Detroit is worse than Gary, Indiana. So, as a Michigan man, I'm going to go ahead and say Detroit is actually a worse place. Never go there. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're specifically going there because you like to explore abandoned buildings. That's because, all the hipsters, Holy shit, though. there's a lot of them. Um, Gary, Indiana, it has a really high crime rate. It has, like, three or four steel mills. So, it smells all the time. The entire city gets coated in this, like, gray steel mill dust. It's dirty, it's nasty, it's gross. It's one of the worst places in America to live. It's one of the worst places in America to drive past. So, there you go. My sincerest apologies to anyone who lives in Gary, Indiana. I don't mean to offend you. Uh, but, but your city sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny. I'm looking at this. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> I'm what? sorry. I'm sorry. I, okay. So um, I pulled it up on the map. Uh oh. Whoa, well, what happened? So my internet went out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. A dick. The last thing uh, you said was you were talking about how all the streets were numbered. So it. When I was looking at you, you're talking about the crime rate uh, being so terrible. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow, this is like a really small area. Like, this is, Gary's not that big. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and I noticed all the streets were numbered. And I remember, it was like, you know, growing up in Vegas, like, all the streets that were numbered or, or lettered were like, that was like the, the not good part of town. Um, <laughs> you don't, you avoid that at all costs. Uh, and that area of town in Vegas just happens to be right off of MLK. And after I left Vegas, I realized that every town has an MLK. And for the most part, there's not good parts of town attached to MLK. Uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard or Drive or Road or whatever. And so as I'm kind of floating around the streets here in Gary, Indiana, I sure enough goes right into <laughs> Martin Luther King Drive. And I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> it's like everywhere. Uh, and you're like, oh, the crime rate. I'm just like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. It's like, it's like I think anybody that, that lives... And this is, there's like no streets really attached to it either. But I bet you there's a high crime rate right there. Gary, yeah. Indiana. Interesting. Today I learned. Thanks for the, uh, these were the thing. Yeah, no, none of my family lives up there. My family lives um, uh, much, much farther north. Well, I guess ish. Uh, Marion, Indiana. And oh, okay. Kokomo. Uh, and I have a brother that lives uh, pretty much like on the border of Kentucky. So way down there. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with, especially like the Indianapolis to Kokomo, Marion Indi area. So kind of like central, um, and, um, uh, it's definitely a different mindset uh, for sure. I mean, you know, my dad's from out there and everything I talked to, but we have different, uh, views on certain things, but, um, not extreme though. Uh, and it's, it's interesting to see that perspective on things, <clears throat> especially with your brother that you, you know, your brothers that you grew up with. For the yeah. most part, when they're they're out there for so long that they're kind of they're leaning in that direction. You know, they get pulled in that direction. And they, some of their um, some of the things that they their opinions on things are radically different from what I believe in. And it's like, wow, that's really interesting, huh? But um, 
Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, before we got disconnected there. Yeah. I was trying to find a Martin Luther King Drive in Battle Creek, Michigan, and I don't think there is one. So dodge that bullet. Woo! Got lucky. Never, <laughs> never mind that it's a city that's like right between Chicago and Detroit, so it's like constantly plagued by drug trafficking. <laughs> And there's like three terrible parts of town that you'd never want to live in. Oh, so, yeah. look, here, here's an article right here. Uh, in the New Jersey Times, actually. It says, City streets named after Martin Luther King Jr. struggle across the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> so see, I didn't just make wow. it up. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah, that's, uh, I forgot where we were on that. Yeah, the, the whole like dropout, like, so it killed the mood, man, dang. yeah. Basically, we were talking about how Gary, Indiana is the worst. Yeah. Um, wow. That sucks. Basically, everything named Gary is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Uh, that's funny. Uh, Cities. Yeah. You know. Dang. Gannons. No, I'm just kidding. Gannons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, we had various other topics. Uh, we're like... We've spent entirely too long on everything else, but speaking of Gary, by which I mean speaking of Ooh, man. Prodigy, you got the new Prodigy album, right? <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Gary, and there probably I was, was a trying guy to named make... Gary who bought an album from the Prodigy. Yeah. I was trying to make some sort of connection between Gary and how he used to always play uh pendulum before legendary and i just i just couldn't i couldn't and rob swire was inspired by a prodigy yeah, yeah. see good there's some steps there we could re-record there's it definitely some steps i just couldn't <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't make the jump from gary into pendulum for some reason so there you, i i have failed you do 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 yeah sorry um yeah, I did. Uh, and all I wanted to say was that it was awesome. Or it is awesome. Um, do you listen to any pen Pendulum? Uh, do I listen to any Pendulum or oh, Prodigy? Sorry, uh, Prodigy. Stupid Pendulum. Because the answer is yes to both. I don't know why I asked for clarity. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just threw this in here because you, you mentioned that you, know, you bought Pillars of Eternity. I'm like, oh yeah, well I bought the Prodigy album. And yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, if, if you're if you're fans of, I did like a like a 17 tweet review of the thing, I guess. <laughs> uh, but like, it seriously is, it, it's like it's like a best of, but with all original tracks. Um, because usually nice. when you get a best of, there's like all these songs from obviously like you know the past decades of this band's uh, popularity or whatever, um, or discography, and. Yo, you've already heard all these songs, so there's like no point in buying it if you're a fan of the damn band. Um, but this is one of those cases where like this, these songs are, they keep in, it still sounds like Prodigy, but it sounds like Prodigy over the years. Um, and it's just good. It's just really, really good. Uh, nice. Rockweiler being probably one of my favorite tracks, for sure. Um, and there's a couple other that are obviously really good. But um, yeah, they did a really good job. With it. I mean, I, I actually liked Invaders Must Die as well. Um, I, I I liked Invaders Must Die, yeah. I think uh, what there was there were a it? couple tracks that were kind of repetitive, but I still liked it overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always outnumbered, never outgunned. Right? Is that the name of the album? The album prior to Invaders Must yeah, Die. Yeah, always outnumbered, never outgunned. Was not. I was did not quite. It was like I listened to. It, I was like, ah, I'll go back to Fat of the Land. I'll be okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'll roll back on this one. Um, but yeah, yeah lately they've been doing really good. Nice. And, uh, I, didn't, I didn't realize they were still making albums. They've been yeah, around for like, like every, 30 years. <laughs> yeah, it's like every four or five years or something like that. They, they, they yeah. crank out something new. Their live show is great, though. Um, nice. It's hard to really get a feel for the live show when you like pull up like, the, like a YouTube video, a random YouTube video, because um, uh, Maxim, Maximum Reality, the, um, one of the MCs, uh, well, the black guy, right? Um, right. He comes across as very loud and very obnoxious in a lot of the recordings. Um, mm. But when it's live, 
it's like he he blends right in with the music. Nice. Um, and him and Keith Richards or Keith Richards, Jesus Christ. Uh, Keith- <laughs> <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> oh shit. Um, <laughs> Keith Flint, uh, I believe his last name is, but Keith. Him uh, and Keith or Sutherland. Yes, Keith or Sutherland. Uh, yeah, they, <laughs> they they actually do a really good job of just kind of like basically playing the role of the MC, uh, MCs, and uh, singing their parts of the songs and kind of throwing random shit. And Maxim Reality is always like, "Wah!" like constantly, but it works in the live <laughs> show. It's so good. You're just like, "Wah!" Do it again. <laughs> make make the sound again. Make that sound again. Exactly. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I've been out on a huge like, prodigy trip uh, over this nice. past week. Nice. I'll have to check it out. S- but speaking of the letter P. Yeah. Pro- of eternity, uh, man. So you got in on that business. Yeah. Yeah, I picked it up. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm interested enough in this game that I, I want to experience this. Mm-hmm. So I went ahead and picked it up. And it, I, I enjoy it. I think it's a good game. The things I don't like about it are completely not what I was expecting to not like about it. <laughs> it's a whole new list. Yeah. What did you like so about it? Curious. The 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 pausing the pausing actually didn't bother me. Like that's one of your biggest it, concerns. Yeah, it's probably because I'm playing on easy because I was like I it, it it like says when you're starting up the game you're like you you click the medium or whatever the next difficulty level up from easy is and it's like you will have to be super tactical and pause all the time or something like that. And I was like, eh, that's, I'm, I'm going to set myself up to hate this game if I select that difficulty level. So I went with easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still have to pause fairly regularly, but I don't have to be like ridiculously tactical with everything. Like I, I can actually kind of just let, like there's a point in each fight where I can let it just play out, which is cool. Um, the thing, the big thing that I really don't like uh, is all of the text that you have to read. All oh, of the reading. Oh, interesting. Wow. All of the words. Huh. That, like... All the lore, you could say. Well, it's not that, it's not that I don't like the story. Like, I'm cool with the story. It's, it's, a, it's actually a fairly decent story. I actually like the story. I'm cool with all of that. It's not that I'm not interested in what things have to say. It's that I have to read so much <laughs> to it's get definitely very reading heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I get that this is sort of like a love letter to the old, like Baldur's Gate games and stuff like that. And that's how games were back then. And I'm, I totally, totally understand that. Absolutely. If you wanted to play Baldur's Gate again, but have it be a new experience, then yes, play this game. You will love this game. I just like, it feels like a major step backwards to me in terms of like modern game design because a, not only is there way more text than there usually needs to be in terms of like describing what's happening. Like half the time there will be six paragraphs and you only needed one to, <laughs> to get across what's going on. Uh huh. Um, and some of it is voiced, but the problem I have is it's voiced, but the text is already there. So like, I read way faster than the people are talking in the, the voiceover because obviously like it's not very difficult to do. Usually talking uh, versus reading, you can read faster, right? <laughs> Unless someone's talking really fast. Um, so like I'm sitting there and I'm like reading the text and also kind of listening, which actually makes it harder for me to read the text because I'm getting distracted by the words that I'm hearing. And on the flip side, if you're like, okay, okay, fine. I would just listen to you talk. And then you select an option and they don't talk. And you're like, fuck, okay, I'll, now I have to read it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just, I, I, it's a little too text heavy for me, I think. That said, I've, I've clocked about six hours into it so far, which I'm, I'm obviously, I, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface at six hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have been enjoying playing it in spite of all the text. So, yeah. Interesting. It's a good, it's a good solid seven seven and a half out of ten for me there you go yeah yeah it's um i i haven't played it much this week uh just because like work stuff and also uh cory um don is of one is you've seen him around yeah, yeah, yeah um he actually threw a game at me and like, uh he was like i think this is a game you would totally like 
Um, it's kind of like FTL ish, whatever. It's called Ironcast. Mm. It's when I I thought it was a different game. I the way I was like, oh yeah, it's like this this like kind of steampunk Mad Max type thing, whatever. And he was like, yeah, well, no, actually, but uh, here I'll throw it at you. I was like, okay, so I opened it up. Figured that he didn't know what he was talking about, and it was not the game I was thinking. <laughs> and I, I opened it up, and it was like a match three thing in front of me, and I was like, this guy just fucking sent me a match three game. What an ass. I've already played Bejeweled, okay. I know, yeah, and, when, and, and 10 million, right? Whatever that game, 100 million, the name of that game. Um, yeah. And some, I don't know, 17 hours later, <laughs> I'm still like... This fucking guy sent me this game. I can't stop playing. But it's uh, it's a total like tactical, uh, tactical turn-based style uh, setup. Uh, ignoring the graphics and the layout of that, uh, it's kind of it has some of the FTL stuff. Uh, it has some persisting elements in terms of like progression. Um, I, I honestly, like I'll probably end up just doing a fucking video about it because uh, nice. other people have done videos on it and whatnot, but there's like a lot of praise. I think it deserves praise. At the same time, I think it's pretty fair to, to give people a heads up on certain things that are kind of annoying in terms of the way that it functions. That being said, I've logged a shitload of hours in this thing and it's actually what I'm, I'm using DX Tori on this game right now that I'm right in the middle of playing. <laughs> uh, so as soon as we're done with this podcast, I could stop recording that and start playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're, but, just, you're uh, just trying to inflate your numbers on Steam, don't lie. I know <laughs> that happens a lot too. <laughs> uh, but my boss is all like, "Yo, you have 24 hours in on uh, on uh, Pillars of Eternity." The game came out yesterday. I was like, "Yo, yo, yo!" It runs in the background. <laughs> yeah. It's running in the background the whole time. I forgot yeah. it was there. My save file only has like three hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have not even passed Act One on Poe, so mm. I'm a little behind. But uh, anyways, yeah, Iron Class is kind of taking up all my time this week. But that's between that and, that and Prodigy. It's I'm literally like I turned down the music in uh, in Iron Class, which has Iron Cast, which has amazing uh, sound work and music actually. But still, Prodigy takes precedence right now. Nice. But um, but yeah, that's yeah. it. Cool. <sighs> that's all that's going on for me. You got anything else? Mm, nah. Well, all right. Yeah. It was good talking uh, to you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 there is more. Oh, oh, shit. But um, I started playing Trials Mobile. Oh, where, did you? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm telling up. you, man. <laughs> it's I so can hear you breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your tweet. And it's like you were literally the 0.5%. I was like, whoa, yeah. that was really fucking impressive. Yeah, like, I mean, obviously, a ton of those times are people that did the track once and then went <laughs> because it's a free to play game, right? So, right, yeah, yeah. The, not, the, the top 0.5% in Trials Frontier is probably like what the top. I don't know, twenty percent would have been in Trials Evolution or something because you had to buy Trials Evo. But still, point <laughs> five percent, man. It's that that is I was super impressed. One percent worldwide, like across all tracks. How how uh, So I, I so I started playing and uh, I got through all the parts where they're like, they're like every other race, they're like, oh, and I'm going to teach you this thing, and I'm going to teach you this thing. And now at the point, we're like, okay, fine, you could go. Uh, and now I'm doing my own thing. Um, there's that dickhead that's riding a donkey. Yep. Uh, that I have not, I have yet to catch. I've gotten really close, but I've yet to catch him. Um, I'm sure there's some deep, deep, deep lore associated with this asshole <laughs> on a donkey. <laughs> not an ass. Yeah, but but uh, I have yet to got, get there yet, so no spoilers. But uh, yeah, it's <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil the story of Trials Frontier <laughs> for you. Don't worry. Uh, but it's uh, I'm playing on my shield, by the way, so I'm a hundred percent. Well, be like fifty percent cheating. Oh, are you using the the controller for yeah, it? Yeah, but I don't get I don't get any benefits in terms of like actual controlled acceleration or yeah. steering. You know, so yeah, yeah, it's not like on. It's not like on the PC or 360 or whatever, where like you can just kind of push the 
the trigger down a little bit and that's a huge advantage exactly exactly it's it's you're going or you're not going in mm-hmm. frontier yeah so it's um so it feels a bit more comfortable and that's that's kind of what like last night i was in bed like playing it for like fucking hour and a half or something <laughs> uh but yeah i had to link my my uplay account and then uh give it another go because that, i think once you once you link your uplay account that's when you kind of open the door to everything else you're able to do yeah that's when you start getting the rankings and stuff um yeah, and you can you can add me, DV Morph. I will. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Uh, I think I think because we're already friends on UPlay that maybe it'll show up there. Oh yeah, it, it should. Is that how they? I, I hope to God that's why they built this platform, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it doesn't work with Squishy for some reason because I know he's playing too, and like, I can't. This is because there's like this gifting thing in game where you can like send people fuel and golden tickets, which are used for the PvP. Ooh. Um. Uh, and it's not like it doesn't cost you anything. It's just like you. It, it's their way to Jesus Christ. My cat is freaking out. It's their way to like keep people logging in. Basically, yeah. Like, you've gotten a gift from AK Mike B. It's kind of like what Diablo does on uh, consoles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um. But I like I can't send him. I can't send Squishy gifts. But I think he might be playing on iOS. If he's not, then something's really broke. <laughs> huh, I wonder if there is a divide there. Because I'm it, playing on Android, so I should, be able to, I should be able to add you, no problem. Yeah, 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 I'm on Android also, so. And everybody listening, you should probably go and play it. It is actually, it actually it's pretty fun. Like, there's a lot of, like, bullshit at the beginning. Uh, with, like, story yeah. and, like, quests and talking to people. And you feel like you're playing, like, some, like, old RPG um, <laughs> with like a couple races in between, but once you get past that, it gets a little bit more race yeah. focused. And eventually, like you spend a while in some really straightforward, like fairly basic tracks, where like it, maybe it, like it, it'll tend to be a little bit tricky to get gold, but it's never like you, you're never not going to be able to complete the tracks yeah. for quite a while. And then eventually, you get to some tracks. Where it's like ninja levels of difficulty. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, sweet. There was this one track, um, which is actually part of a, it was one that I had to, to buy because there's like an island of tracks that you can buy at some point. Um, and they only use like the first level of bikes, um, the like lowest tier of bikes, because there's a ton of bikes you unlock. There's three for each tier. Um, mm. And I thought it was gonna like max out the armadillo and just run that into the ground, but I guess not. You you do you do want to max out the armadillo, okay? Um, because tips, max tips. maxing out the armadillo lets you buy a, an an outfit that will give you like once you own the full outfit, it gives you a passive benefit that reduces the cost of upgrades on everything else. Oh, hey, okay. Yeah, you do have to spend gems to get that, but. <sighs> Just accept now that you're going to spend money on this game <laughs> and you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, well, and they, they do, they'll, they'll throw a whole bunch of like specials at you that are usually worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, because it'll be like 10 bucks for 30 bucks worth of stuff. Um, but yeah, eventually you get these tracks. There's like some of the really later ones. You eventually get to the third tier of bikes and some of those are pretty difficult. Some of those tracks are pretty difficult. Um, but like the the tracks that you buy with gems on this, there's like this island that you unlock. I have not been able to get better than bronze on any of them yet, uh, and I'm top one percent in Trials Frontier. I just want to point that out. <laughs> like I have not been able to get better than bronze on any of them yet, and some of them like I have not been able to beat with less than like twenty faults, because. They're just really, really super technical and difficult. Um, wow. And it's the sort of... Like, there's one of them. It's called um, Melancholy Temple, I think. Uh-huh. That immediately, like, very first thing it puts you up against is this, like... You have to go, go down this, like, little shaft sort of thing um, without, like, crashing on your way down it because it's one of the... There isn't, like, a ramp that goes down. It's just a straight drop with a wall on the other side so you can't, like, run into the wall too hard and then crash that way. Um, and then you have to do a bunny hop over a bunch of fire 
into onto a very steep ramp, like super steep ramp. That's not it's not like below you or anything. It's the same level as you. So you've got a bunny hop over this fire onto this ramp and then go up the ramp and over without falling into the fire. And it's really tough what? to do. I've only been able to do it like three or four times. And every time I do it, I then end up finishing the track. But that's like the first obstacle. <laughs> This sounds great! Oh my god, okay. Alright. Yeah, it's really good. And it, it uses the lowest tier of bikes, so you should be able to get access to that pretty quickly if you do end up buying it. Yeah. But you're gonna want to have up... This is the one negative thing about Trials Frontiers. You're gonna want to have upgraded your bikes a bit before you can actually really make any headway. Because you, you just need the extra muscle. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing that kind of stood out. It's like, you know, when you play... When you've been playing Trials... Uh, for so long like you're used to you get a bike and that's it like yeah now that, that is the bike once you once you have this bike it's learning the bike yeah yeah and then you have to upgrade the bike and everything and so i figure i guess it says it's not like a talent tree setup where you sacrifice something for the other like you're even maxing uh then it just makes yeah, sense just, just just max everything out yeah it's all just straight upgrades yeah that's good I mean, at least that's the best if you're gonna have something that is you know straight skill base at least make it like a flat entry level where it's like, yeah, you know, whether it's something I have to work for or whatever, as long as it's not like I have to mid max acceleration versus top speed or something, just dump all my points in it and just go. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually you will get to a point where you can do missions for this little robot called Anba. Um, and what those missions are is it actually like takes a ghost from a random other player and you have to beat that ghost. And every time you do that, you get an upgrade part and like 3,000 XP and 3,000 gold or something like that. It might scale based on your, your level. I'm not mm. actually sure. But you get like a bunch of gold and XP and an upgrade part every time you do that. And you can just, like, it's just one race. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take any time at all to do that. So every once in a while, I go, right, it's time to get some upgrades. And I just bang out a whole bunch of Anba missions back to back. Um, and that's how I'll, I'll get through that. And I would recommend in terms of upgrading bikes, you want to upgrade the Armadillo as much as you can. You want to upgrade the Tango. Once you get the Tango, that's like one of the most important bikes. Okay. Um, it's, the, it's basically the equivalent of the Phoenix in uh, Trials oh, Okay, Evo. yeah. Um, the, there's, there's three like agile bikes. There's one for each tier, and they're all three kind of, they kind of fall into that category of the Phoenix from uh, Trials Evo. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to upgrade that. You want to ignore the speed bikes at first <laughs> because they're shitty. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're the kind of bikes that every once in a while you get stuck with one for, like, your um, slot machine mission or something. Yeah. Or, like, you'll get stuck with one for, uh, if you're doing the PvP, the um, bunker. You'll get stuck on, like, the Bronco... Uh, or the Marauder or something. It's usually it's really the Bronco that sucks. Um, when I get stuck with a Bronco, I just go, well, I lose that track. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. just not going to be able to do that. <laughs> Noted, then. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I will probably leave here. What is it? Uh, it's pretty late. It's almost midnight. So I will yeah. probably go straight to bed and play some of that. And... I appreciate yeah. the tips. So Bronco bad. Bronco bad at first. Tango like once, good. Once Tango very good. Armadillo very good. Yeah, all right. Um, and then you'll like you'll unlock the jackal, and that's kind of that's okay. It's not bad. You'll be stuck with a jackal for a little while. You'll get the mantis. You want to upgrade the hell out of the mantis. Basically, each tier has a balance bike, a speed bike, and a agile bike. And oh, the, I see. Balance and agile bikes are usually the agile bike is the most important, um, especially for beating the Anba missions. Mm -hmm. um, but the balance bike is also good for the cases where, like every once in a while, you'll you'll hit somebody who's like, "I'm gonna use the Bronco," and that's how I got a really fast time here. And you can <clears throat> usually beat them with the Armadillo, just <laughs> flat out. You usually can. All right. So, yeah. Well, thank you for the tips. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm gonna go do that now. I will, I will talk about Trials Frontier for an entire episode. I noticed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, I uh, hope you have a good week, sir. Yeah. And I guess I will see you next week. Oh, and uh, enjoy your stream this weekend. I'll try to tune in.
Yeah, definitely. And check it out. You're probably yeah, going to yeah. tweet it. Yeah, I will. All right. Well, then, I will talk to you later. Bye. Bye. See ya. Goodbye.